Tom Halliwell here and welcome to my first ever podcast. I'm sitting here in my room. I've just eaten some strawberry ice cream which was delicious on a fine rainy day here in sunny Farnborough. And first I want to kick off my podcast by saying a big thank you to all the people that have supported me and all all my great students who are currently learning with me and who have learned from me. Um, all the support's been amazing, so thank you very much. Now, people, this podcast is a podcast for beginners about rock guitar, yeah? It's about starting guitar. It's about a guitar player's journey. This isn't a podcast about jazz guitar It's not a podcast about minor 7th flat 13th chords or any of that. It's strictly beginning guitar, starting guitar. We'll talk a bit about guitar gear maybe. Um, We'll speak a lot about taking action as I am a massive believer of taking action. Stop thinking, more doing, yeah? And... Yeah, today I want to kick off the podcast with getting started, having a goal. Because most guitar players start playing guitar just as a hobby, which is fine. I've done the same. And then they start getting good at guitar. And now when you start getting good at guitar, you start practicing more. Because you're believing in yourself more and you're like, wow, maybe guitar is for me. Yeah? So you start believing in yourself more, you start practicing more, and you reach a point where you start losing interest in everything, yeah? So you lose interest in school, if you're at school. Um, you lose interest in at your job. If you're working somewhere, you'll be working and you'll just be thinking constantly about playing guitar. You just want to get home and play guitar. If you're at school, your English teacher is teaching you about grammar or commas or some English literature, William Shakespeare stuff. And your mind is just thinking of a rock guitar solo. I used to do the same when I was at school. I sat at the back of the classroom, head down, thinking constantly about Iron Maiden. I used to just, the trooper used to be going through my head constantly, the riff, uh, the solos. And I'll tell you a quick funny story. I used to, when I was 15, I used to watch, I used to get home from school about four o'clock And I used to practice guitar for three hours. I think it was from like four till seven uh, or four to six. And then I think I watched The Simpsons for half an hour while eating dinner. And then I practiced for like one hour more. And then I used to watch an Iron Maiden DVD. And it was Live After Death. And I used to watch that same DVD for a whole entire year, every single night imagining that I was um, Adrian Smith or Dave Murray, which are the guitarists for Iron Maiden. I used to just sit there imagining I was that guitarist and basically dreaming. And every time I went to bed, yeah, I was just in that mood of I want to be successful and I want to be like them. So this is where guitar players start off. They start off... Um, As a hobby, then we get good at guitar, we start practicing more, then we get obsessed with guitar, um, so that's the only thing we start thinking about. Then comes a time where you start thinking, I need to make guitar my career. And so you have, you know, you start looking for ways, how can I get paid for guitar? And now some people might go to a music college. And we'll explain um, the disadvantages and advantages of that in a minute. Some people might just go straight into teaching. They might go, well, the only way for me to earn money as a guitar teacher, uh, sorry, a guitarist is to teach. So they start teaching. But usually they go through the stage of going to music college, which I did as well. When I was 16, I went to music college from 16 to 18. Um, ACM in Guildford, if any of you knows that. 
And, I mean, it's great. You learn with other musicians. My musicianship certainly went up. But you've got to be careful with music colleges because you can lose your focus and why you started guitar. You can lose that side of you. Um, I certainly did. I was a rock guitarist, had dreams of being in the originals band, had dreams of inspiring people and being that amazing rock guitarist. Went to college and I came out as a confused guitarist who was playing, fumbling through all styles and kind of like playing with singers, um, acoustic stuff, backing singers, in function bands, playing songs that I don't even care about. And um, I thought I was doing the right thing. Because all the teachers um, were saying the same thing. They were all saying, if you want to make it as a musician, you need to teach guitar. You need to be in a function band. You need to play other people's songs. Forget about writing your own songs. And they train you to be basically session guitarists. Uh, I would say they train you to be teachers, but they really don't. They they train you to be good guitarists. And um, I don't know if you've seen my recent video I've put out, but a good guitarist does not make a good teacher. Um, two totally different things. It's like we can speak English, but trying to teach English is something totally different. Yeah? And... Uh, yeah, I, I, there's a video I put out because I was really annoyed of guitar teachers these days. A lot of them are teaching students wrong. And I won't repeat what I said on the video, but guitar is a skill set. And I'm very against these guitar teachers that are promoting, uh, what are they saying? They're saying things like, you know, we... I'm a good, I'm a guitar teacher, this is my experience, I've played with this person, this person, this person, and uh, the common line that I hear all the time is, I tailor my guitar lessons to your individual needs, which to me is just a, basically a, a cop-out uh, way of saying, I have nothing prepared for you, I don't have any structure, I am just going to see you on the first lesson and basically not prepare a single thing and just teach you the first thing that comes to my mind. That's what that means, yeah? Whereas with me, yeah, um, last week I um, launched the Tom Halliwell Guitar School and I run my students through a structured method, yeah? Because for the first year, for the first six months to a year, every single guitarist has to learn the same things. So it doesn't matter if you've got individual structured lessons to everyone's needs because all students need to know the same things. With guitar, it's the skill set. The fundamentals are the same. Yeah, Every guitarist needs to know how to pick you know, picking. Every guitarist needs to know basic chords. Every guitarist needs to know arpeggios and scales yeah and a tiny bit of theory but that comes after the playing so any guitar teacher that is basically you know if you're a beginner guitarist and that guitar teacher is saying I, I'm i very individual I cater to your needs what does that mean just ask them what does that actually mean um, she needs to be careful these teachers and what the downfalls is, is you start guitar and you get taught with a teacher like that who has no structure. Um, he basically throws you uh, some complicated chords. Well, three finger chords like G. He throws you an E minor chord and an A chord or a D. And you learn that chord and you go home, practice it and you figure out that you can't do it. The second week comes, he goes, oh, have you learned these chords? And you go, well, I'm trying. And then he basically says, okay, just keep practicing, just keep practicing. And you go on for about a whole month, two months. 
but eventually you're going to give up because you're not going to be playing those chords. A very rare, maybe 5% of students can play them within the first month, but most students can't. And so you're going to be waiting months on end, learning these chords, struggling, sounding rubbish. Um, of course you're going to give up. You know, if, if I went to a boxing class and on the first boxing lesson they taught me a combination of punches or they taught me a few punches and then they said, OK, right, you're ready to get in the ring with a, a boxer who's been boxing for two years and he's been learning all his combo punches and everything. Good luck, you know. I'm going to give up on the first lesson. I'm going to not go back. I'll take a beating from that guy and... I won't be going back at all, okay, because it destroys your confidence. So guitar teachers that teach full chords to beginner guitarists who'd never played a guitar before or touched a guitar in their life, you're destroying their confidence. And I simply don't like that um, because I think everyone should have the opportunity to learn guitar and to not struggle. Okay, there is a little bit of struggle. The struggle is just your fingers hurt a little bit, and that's about it. You need to be starting off with one finger chords, you need to be starting off with one strings, you know, one string, two strings, three strings. You can't be starting off with six string chords and three fingers. Okay, that's my rant about guitar teachers. <laughs> so, going back to what I was talking about which was um, music colleges. So they teach you to be whole rounded guitar players, you know, all rounded. Um, you've got to learn every single style. Um, if you don't, you're not going to be successful. That's what they teach you. And there's a very big danger in believing that. Let's take Slash. Slash is a great guitarist, an amazing, phenomenal action taker. Okay, that guy is crazily good but can you put slash in a country band can you put slash in a gypsy jazz trio um no maybe he can fumble through because he knows the basics of uh guitar but he's a rock guitarist and he does rock guitar and rock guitar is what he does best and he sticks to his strengths I think it was Steve Vai who said, um, cultivate your strengths and forget about your weaknesses. It was a quote similar to that. He basically goes on the concept of work on your strengths, don't work on your weaknesses. And I agree with him. Yeah. Or well, I agree. I say work on what you're good at and work on what you're passionate about. Right. Because if you're not good at jazz, but you're really passionate and you listen to jazz, then work on it. Practice. Immerse yourself in it. So, definitely. Work on what you're good at, but also work on what you're passionate about. I've, myself, been through the journey of um, starting guitar with a bad guitar teacher. It took me three years to even start uh, the pentatonic scales and stuff like that. I mean, just really bad, really bad teaching. I got a very good one at the age of 15, though. Um, and he was great. And then I went to ACM, and I started getting all confused with styles of music. I learned lots of weird styles, and, you know, I became a very average guitarist. Basically, I could play a little bit of jazz, a little bit of country, a little bit of blues. Um... A little bit of rock. My rock guitar playing went down massively. Um, my palm mutant techniques, everything went down. I could play a little bit of funk. And so I essentially became a very average guitar player with no strengths. I, I left college at 18. I started playing with like function bands, um, solo artists. And I thought I was doing the right thing, but I wasn't happy. I was teaching guitar. And I would admit, I was teaching guitar wrong. I was teaching guitar just how I explained how not to teach it. 
you know, starting students off with all these chords and overcomplicating things. And guess what? I lost a lot of students and um, I didn't have too many, to be honest, but I lost quite a lot and they just couldn't keep up. But I take full responsibility in um, being a bad teacher at that time. Thank God nowadays I am much better. <laughs> So I went through loads of session work, doing doing all that stuff, uh, getting paid hardly anything to be honest, uh, doing some gigs for free, and I'd play for these solo artists, I come off stage, and all the attention's obviously on the singer and on the person who I'm playing for, and I didn't want that, I wanted to be Dave Murray, I wanted to be Adrian Smith, I wanted to be the guitarist at the front. The one that everyone's like, yes, you're awesome. That type of one. You know, don't we all? I'm sure if you're a rock guitarist listening to this now, you're like, yes, I want to be that. Or maybe you've gone past the point where you think it's um, possible. So this is the main thing I want to speak about is I went through all that stuff and then I realized that all that stuff didn't make me happy. What made me happy was sitting down with a guitar and playing rock guitar. Yeah, playing Iron Maiden, playing rock guitar in originals band, being the star of the show. Yeah, that's what made me happy. And when I figured that out, I literally went back to what I was passionate about when I was 11, 12. So I want all you guitar players, if you're listening to this right now, to think back when you started guitar, when you wasn't thinking of money, when it was just a hobby, just a passion, what were you playing? What was you really passionate about? What really you woke up for and you just wanted to play that? Because we all get caught up in, we get to a point of our guitar playing where we start getting good and we start thinking of money. And then we start basically killing our dreams to earn money with guitar. And so I want to bring everyone back to what their dreams were and to start chasing them again. Because that's what's going to make you happy and that's what's going to fulfill you. Also, while we're on this topic of um, learning all styles, I want to speak to you about the disadvantages and advantages of learning all styles. Okay, If you're a rock guitarist, you have a certain feel about you. If you only play rock guitar you and only listen to rock guitar, you definitely have a certain feel uh, that just screams rock. So when you start playing blues, when you start playing funk, you are playing blues, you are playing funk as a rock guitarist, and so the feel is still like a rock guitarist. That's where you need to be with your styles, yeah? But if you're learning all styles, there's just no way someone can be play jazz guitar like a proper authentic top jazz man, play funk guitar like a proper authentic funk player, and play rock guitar like an authentic rock player. Just can't be done. So what you need to do is you really need to figure out what style you love. What do you listen to the most? What style do you enjoy playing the most? And what style do you envision yourself playing? And what you need to do is look at other guitar players from that style, look at other you know people from that style, and start thinking how can you look, dress like, a person who's that style. So for me, I'm a rock guitarist. I dress like a rock guitarist. If you see my videos, I've got the leather jacket, I've got the boots on, I've got the long curly hair. That's what a rock guitarist should look like, right? Um, and when I meet people, you know, if I if they say, "Ah, oh, what do you do?" and I say, "Okay, take a guess," and they're like, uh, "Are you a guitarist?" I'm like, "Yes, yes, good." Or they're like, oh, are you creative? I'm like, yeah, I'm a guitarist. And they're like, oh, cool, what, what style? And I was like, what style do you think? And they always say rock. That's how you need to look. You need to start dressing like the style that you play. Look at your favourite guitar players, start dressing, copying. Yeah. The first stage of learning is copying 
then you start developing your own style after you've copied um, you, your favorites. Second thing is stick to that one style. Yeah, don't 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 just start playing other styles because you think that's how you be successful. So it's coming up to an end of the first Tom Hallowell podcast. I've dabbled in so many different areas, um, but so much is on my mind. I'm an obsessed person, you know. Things go through my head like all the time. And I think obsession is actually a good thing. Um, People think it's not normal, but if you look at the best guitarists, they're not normal. Jimi Hendrix, he played guitar, he slept with his guitar. Um, I heard also, uh, what what guitarist was it? I think it was Jeff Beck also does the same. Um, No, no, not Jeff Beck. Gary Moore, he does the same as well. He used to... Apparently, you never saw Gary Moore without a guitar. How great is that? And so, the best guitar players are obsessed with guitar. So, anyone who says, oh, you're getting too obsessed with guitar, don't listen to them. Keep playing. Keep practicing. Keep committing. Okay, you're doing the right thing there. Um, So, I just want to finish up with um, focus on one style. Okay, people? Focus on, you know, maybe why did you start playing guitar? What gives you the shivers when you learn a new song? You know, for me, if I learn an I Maiden solo, I get shivers. I just want to play that solo all day. Um, if I learn a Gypsy Jazz solo, I really don't care. <laughs> so, definitely focus on why you started playing guitar. I started through Brian May. Thank that genius. Uh, Brian May, I think at the age of 14, I learned about five different Queen solos. And then I got really into Iron Maiden um, at 15 and obsessed with Iron Maiden. Didn't listen to any other band but Iron Maiden for like two years. And then I started getting into Guns N' Roses and other stuff. And then after that, I got into pop and um, started getting into lots of pop music. But I'm still questioning why I got into it. I think it was because... Um, the music college brainwashing made me think that, oh, if I wanted to be successful, I needed to start playing pop music or popular music, you know? So I started getting into all these weird, silly, like, artists that I don't really care about now. But now I'm back into rock guitar and I'm going hard and I want to inspire all of you and I want to, um teach as many students as I can and I want you all to come on the amazing journey of guitar playing uh, because it really does change your life that's no joke it changes your life yeah one thing before I go um, thank you all for listening thank you all for subscribing to my channel on YouTube you've been wonderful and thanks for all the comments All the support, all the comments means a lot to me. And I'm just going to keep going, keep going. And I want you all to come along with me. And that's great. So that was the Tom Halliwell Podcast 1. So I'll be releasing a new podcast. I'm going to try and do it once a week. Okay, I don't know what day yet, but it will happen. I've got a very busy schedule right now. I'm going out to uh, put some more flyers out across my town, uh, advertising my guitar school. If you haven't already checked out my website, um, you can check it out. I've got two. I've got the Tom Halliwell, or shall we say www.tomhalliwell.co.uk. That's my website. And then I've got my guitar school website, which is tomhalliwellguitarschool.com. And... That's, you know, if you live in Farnborough, if you live near Farnborough um, and you want guitar lessons, uh, if you're a beginner, you're new to guitar, you really want to play guitar, check out my website, send me an email. That's tom at tomhalliwellguitarschool.com. Send me an email there and Even if you live in the USA, live in Germany, live in another country, send me an email at um, tom at tomhalliwellguitarschool.com. 
Um, if you have any questions, if you have any feedback, if you want to, you know, maybe you're looking for a guitar and you want some recommendations, just send me an email. I'll be sure to answer you um, within 24 hours. And yes, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't. Um, this podcast will be going on iTunes. Thanks a lot for listening, guys and girls. Ta-da.